Welcome to Physics 2100 at Cal State LA. I am your professor, Dr. Bijan Berenji. This is video two on kinematics, August 2016. Introduction. We embark upon our study of kinematics by exploring the concepts of position, velocity, and acceleration. We will think of these quantities as functions of time. They may be related to each other using calculus. Position may be denoted by a vector. In one dimension, it is commonly denoted by x, with positive or negative direction. The displacement is a scalar quantity given by delta x equals x2 minus x1. We assume for now that the y and z components of the acceleration are zero. Displacement. displacement can be depicted by motion along a straight line. For example, we can consider an object at t equals 1 second located at x equals 0.2 meters and at t equals 4 seconds at 0.8 meters. Displacement is x2 minus x1 equals 0.6 meters. Velocity describes the rate of change of position. It is a vector quantity in general. The magnitude of the velocity has units of length per time, such as meters per second or kilometers per hour. There are two ways to think about velocity, average velocity and instantaneous velocity. Average velocity between two points may be defined by v average equals x2 minus x1 divided by t2 minus t2 minus t1 equals delta x over delta t. The average velocity depends on the displacement delta x that occurs during the delta t, not on the details of what happens during the time interval. In figure one, we all already computed delta x, so we have v average equals 0.6 meters divided by 3 seconds equals 0.2 meters per second. Instantaneous velocity between two points may be defined using calculus, v equals dx dt, or in vector notation as v equals dx dt. On a position time graph, the instantaneous velocity may be determined by the slope at a given time. On a velocity time graph, the displacement between two points is the integral of the velocity curve. Acceleration is the time rate of change of velocity. If the acceleration is zero, there will be no change in the velocity. If the acceleration is positive, the velocity will increase. If the acceleration is negative, the velocity will decrease. Average acceleration is defined by delta v over delta t. Instantaneous acceleration is the derivative of the velocity, a equals dv dt. Below is a summary of the useful formulas in kinematics. Equation 1 is the formula for the average velocity between two points. The second equation is the average velocity from the initial and final velocities. The third equation relates the velocity to the acceleration and time. Equation 4 relates the position to the time and the velo initial velocity and acceleration and the initial position. In an exercise, we can easily derive the equation 3 from the equation 4 by differentiation.
example, we have x equals x0 plus v0 t plus half a t squared. Now, you can imagine taking the derivative of this. Take the derivative dx dt on the left side, derivative of each of this each of the terms on the right side, we are left with v equals v0 plus a t. You can derive equation 5 from equations 3 and 4 by eliminating t. Eliminate t, then substitute in the equation 4. So t equals v minus v0 over a. We simply substitute the equation for time into the equation, and uh, we solve for uh, v squared. So we get 2a delta x equals v squared minus v naught squared, and we are left with the final equation in the box. Free fall motion. In free fall motion, we may consider a 2D system with x along the horizontal and y along the vertical. We define y being positive upwards. Then the acceleration due to gravity g will be given by g equals negative g j hat. The equation for velocity may be written as vy equals v0y minus gt. We may integrate the velocity components to determine the y position as a function of time. y equals v0yt minus half gt squared. Often in these types of problems, we are only given the initial velocity magnitude v0 and an angle theta with respect to the horizontal. In this case, we may write v0x and v0y. Note that the formula, following useful formula applies here. v squared equals v0 squared minus 2gy, which is helpful when you know the magnitude of the initial velocity and final velocity at a given point. Position time, velocity time, and acceleration time curves. To find the velocity from a position time curve, simply take the slope at that time. To find the distance traveled from a velocity time curve, take the area under the curve between the two times in the interval. Constant velocity. The figure 2, the dashed line corresponds to negative acceleration. The solid line corresponds to positive acceleration. And the dotted line corresponds to zero acceleration. The, the dashed line in the x is increasing from 0 to 20 in an interval of 10 seconds. Velocity is uh, constant at 2 meters per second, and the acceleration is 0. For constant acceleration, in figure 3, the solid line corresponds to positive acceleration, the dashed line corresponds to negative acceleration, and the dot line corresponds to zero acceleration. We see that the green line is decreasing, the velocity is decreasing, but for the blue line, the velocity is increasing. We have from earlier that v equals dx dt. How can we go backwards? How can we obtain x in terms of t, knowing vx? We can use integration from calculus. x equals x naught plus integral of 0 to t vx dt.
Figure four. This illustrates the taking of the area under the curve to obtain the position time curve and the velocity time curve. For example, uh, v axis is a straight line, is a linearly function of t, and x is increasing like t squared because we're taking the area under the curve. Uniform circular motion. Acceleration of an object undergoing uniform circular motion at radius r, but the origin may be expressed as a equals v squared over r. The velocity may be related to the angular velocity omega as v equals omega r. Thus, the acceleration may be expressed as a equals omega squared r. If the period of the uniform circular motion is t, then the angular velocity may be expressed as omega equals 2 pi over t. May it have both tangential and centripetal components of velocity and acceleration. In circular motion, we may have x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. Now we are going to examine six examples of kinematics problems. Example one, what is the average velocity of an object that travels three meters in 2.0 seconds? We have V average equals delta X over delta T equals 3.0 meters divided by 2.0 seconds. This is 1.5 meters per second. Example 2. What is the instantaneous velocity of an object whose position is given by x of t equals 3t squared minus 2t plus 1? Using calculus, we have v equals dx dt equals 6t minus 2. Example 3. What is the acceleration of an object whose velocity changes from 10.0 meters per second to 20.0 meters per second in 4.0 seconds? Use the formula A equals VF minus VI or TF minus TI equals 20 minus 10 meters divided by 4.0 seconds, which gives us 2.5 meters per second.
Example 4. What is the acceleration of an object whose velocity is given by v of t equals 3t plus 5? Solution is given by A equals dvdt, which is simply 3 meters per second squared. Example 5. What is the velocity time graph corresponding to position figure 5? Hint. Use the calculate on the two second intervals. Figure 6, we have the top plot which shows x versus t, which is a slightly even a different scale, but it's exactly the same graph. And the bottom plot, we have vx versus t. Uh, so the hint was to calculate the velocity on the different intervals. So uh, calculate vx from each of the so as follows, in this interval 0 to 2 seconds, we have x1 equals 0 meters and x2 equals 2 meters. And v equals x2 minus x1 over t2 minus t1 equals 2.0 meters minus 0 meters divided by 2.0 second minus 0 second equals 1.0 meters per second. Likewise, we can calculate in the 8 to 10 second interval velocity of 4 meter, negative 4 meters per second. Level 6. The car undergoes constant acceleration from an initial velocity of 5 meters per second to a final velocity of 10.0 meters per second. If this acceleration takes place over 100 meters, what is the car's acceleration? Solution is given by using the one of the equations from kinematics, vx squared equals v minus v0 x squared equals 2a delta x. We solve for a. a equals vx squared minus v0 x squared divided by 2 delta x gives us a equals 0.38 meters per second squared. You consider the last example on your own. Having found the acceleration, what is the time interval over which the acceleration occurred? Use one of the formulas from kinematics that were presented earlier.